Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamic Tough Testing, a visual guide to interpreting and understanding flow patterns. But what about the title of this video? Don't believe all you can see. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at some very, very deceptive imagery that's getting around on the web. This is just one example, but there are probably tens of thousands of examples. So let's take a step back and look at a car in a wind tunnel. So here we have a Kia Stinger in a wind tunnel, and you can see that there are smoke streams that show the directions of airflow. Now, it also shows the pressures acting on the vehicle because the closer the streams are together, the lower the pressure. And so if I get my mouse, there's a higher pressure there, there's a lower pressure there, and we can see that the streamline on this very well streamlined car follows the airflow down the hatch to that little vestigial spoiler there. It's a, a nice car and it's a nice shot showing what actually happens with airflow. What about another one? A Porsche SUV in the wind tunnel and again we can see those smoke streams showing where the airflow actually goes and incidentally look how even that far above the car the airflow is changed in its direction by the presence of the car's body. Okay you're saying so what I've seen uh, smoke stream pictures of wind tunnel cars before what, what, what's the point being made? Well one more shot this photo shows how those smoke streams are created. And if we go over here, we can see a rake of probes that issue smoke. And you can see how parallel that smoke is, showing that the airflow isn't very turbulent until the airflow gets to the car and then its shape is changed. Now, I'm prompted to give this background because when we look at another visual, we're actually going to see stuff that is simply not correct. So here we have, I was going to call it CFD, but it's not even really CFD, it's flow visualization software used widely in movies and things like that, I imagine. So here we have a recreated BMW, note also its rear wing, and it appears to be in a studio the way that the recreation has been set up, all well and good until we get to the fact that it's also attempting to show what would happen in a wind tunnel. In other words, what the airflow directions actually are. So over here, we have the rake, just as we saw in the real wind tunnel, and we have the airflow purporting to uh, be, be traveling towards the vehicle. Now, I say purportedly because all this is a simulation, and as we'll see in a minute, this simulation has got some grave errors in it. So again, different view, showing that rake, showing the smoke going over the vehicle. And if you look closely, you can see already there's actually a bit of a problem, but we'll get to that in this shot. So the, the, the big problem is that the smoke does not actually, or the smoke in inverted commas, does not actually reflect what happens on a real car. So we can see here we're not seeing those characteristic spacing variations in the smoke streams as we saw on the real, real car. But really badly, what we've got is we've got separation occurring from the top of the windscreen, the beginning of the roof, and then all from behind, it's all in separated flow. Now, you might be saying, well, isn't that right? No, it's not. On a car of this shape, tested in a proper wind tunnel, the smoke streams would come down the back of the car and pass underneath that wing. Remember, it's got a wing there. Now, if the smoke separated at the beginning of the roof, the top of the windscreen like this, BMW Aerodynamics would have done an absolutely atrocious job because they would have to have had a spoiler mounted right up there to actually separate the airflow at that point. And of course, they don't want to do that. What they want is the airflow to stay attached to give the smallest possible wake behind the car, thus giving low drag. And of course, they want the wing to be in clear airflow. And if we look at the next shot, which I've simply lightened a lot, we can see that the wing is in completely separated flow. Now, the people and company that produce these images might say, well, it's not really meant to show how things really are, 
But of course, everyone looking at this image, looking at this is actually from a YouTube video, looking at this would say, well, of course that's meant to be how it is. Why would you put up a video if it's not actually correct? Now, I'm not completely sure if the people who did this video had never really tested a car and so didn't know what the airflow was supposed to look like or they didn't care, it didn't matter, they were just showing visualizations for movies or whatever. But the upshot is, Anyone looking at this video would get a completely wrong idea of how airflow behaves on this car. And I have seen this again and again and again and again. I have seen separated flow on modeling starting from the front leading edge of the hood or the bonnet completely and utterly wrong. I have seen completely wrong airflow patterns shown under cars, with even with what purports to be CFD, uh, typically because the underfloor of the CAD model is not correct. They've just given a perfectly smooth floor. And of course the airflow is going to behave quite differently if you've got a perfectly smooth floor compared with a real world rough floor. So anyone looking at this video and assuming that reflects the airflow on a BMW of this sort or a, a car even of a similar shape would get a completely wrong idea. And there is so much of this misinformation around on the web. I, I'm starting to think even the majority of purported airflow um, depictions are wrong. Uh, why? Typically because no one's ever done any testing and to come back to the book I mentioned at the beginning of this video, tough testing would immediately show that this airflow as shown here is wrong. Tough testing 10 minutes on the road just with some little bits of wool or other yarn stuck to the car would immediately show this is wrong. It really is that simple to test on the road and see what is really happening. There we've got it pictured from the back <clears throat> and you can see there's just this massive turbulence way above the car, massive separated flow way above the car, just nothing like the car would actually be. And as I said, it's, it's not alone. That video is not alone. If we have a look over here, here was uh, another um, depiction of airflow, which is completely wrong, but at least these people didn't say it was right. They're selling a, a little... Uh, wind tunnel for putting your, your model cars in, little little cars, and because of something called the Reynolds number, the flow is not going to be correct in the way it's depicted, and you can see here, again, this separates way too early. In fact, the flow would flow down the rear window. It doesn't on every car, but it does on cars of this shape. Over here, what purports to be a Porsche, I keep using the word purports, doesn't it? Purports to be a Porsche 959, separated flow from the leading edge of the roof, utterly and completely wrong. And of course the airflow travels down the rear of this car and allows that wing to work. I haven't tough tested a Porsche 959, but I have tough tested a 911 with exactly that same uh, rear window and uh, roof shape. And of course it had attached flow down the back. Uh, Mercedes W123, it looks all right, but the CFD, if you squint and don't look at anything in detail, but if you look at things in detail, and I've got one of these cars, and I have tough tested it, uh, what that shows is simply not correct. And over here, yet another one that's incorrect. This lovely smooth flow coming out from underneath the BMW. It's like it's got a full length smooth under tray. And of course, the underside of that car looks nothing like that. I was hoping to run another image on this slide, and that was uh, CFD that was put up of dimples on a golf ball dimples on a golf ball compared with a golf ball without dimples and their CFD was completely reversed. It actually showed a bigger wake behind the ball with the dimples, which is completely wrong. People just put up stuff that's absolute garbage and, and, and they just don't know any better. And other people look at it because it's colourful and done by a computer, they assume that it much, must actually be right and it's so often completely wrong. And here's an example of tough testing on uh, a uh, AMG GT done by my good friend Paul Orford. And it shows the subtleties, accurate subtleties that even high quality CFD struggles with. Even high quality CFD with a really good CAD model, really detailed CAD model, really good engineering running the CFD and really good software, it still struggles with these subtleties. And what I'm talking about is you can see separated flow here behind the wheel. You can see flow wrapping around the C-pillar. 
you can see flow there, attached flow underneath this uh, rear spoiler. It is a spoiler, not a wing, because the angle of attack is too great. And uh, it is stalled, which you can see if you look really closely by that tuft. These subtleties of flow, the direction of that tuft there, showing how much airflow is being drawn up to this low pressure area on the back of the car, the subtleties of these flows, tuft testing reveals with absolute accuracy, with real world turbulence, with real world yaw crosswind components in a way that CFD finds very, very difficult, let alone software that claims just to be flow visualization for a movie or whatever and not CFD, which can be completely and utterly wrong. Don't believe all you see. Test and tough testing is the cheapest, the quickest, the easiest and the most accurate way of actually working out what airflow is doing on your car. Nothing beats tough testing, nothing at all for accuracy on the road in real world conditions. The book, Vehicle Aerodynamic Tough Testing, a visual guide to interpreting and understanding flow patterns, out towards the end of this year, 2024, if you're looking at this video uh, at the end of 2024 or 2025 or later, the book will be out now. It's available on Amazon in your country and it shows how to do tough testing and how to interpret and understand what it is that you are seeing and it is so much more accurate than so much of the CFD and flow visualization software and images that you see on the web. Thank you.